thank you for all of you who have made it uh, to the service today. Of course, uh, celebrating the life of a brother, friend, uncle uh, of Gerard Jomain. Jomé, sorry. I'm gonna, Juma, sorry. I want to thank God for all of you who are here who have made this and your effort to be here today. And as we start our service today, shall we all stand? And I welcome our um, Deacon Philip to open this in a word of prayer. Let's pray. Righteous and adorable Father which art in heaven, the creator of the universe, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. This afternoon, Lord, we reverence ourselves before your presence because we know that there is none like you. And even as we are gathered here in this fashion, great God, I present the Juma family into your hands, great God. And I know, Father divine, in the time of sorrow, Father, you are the comforter. Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that, Lord, you will comfort them at this time in the moment of sorrow. Father, we know that death is an appointment that we all have, Father divine. And this afternoon, great God, we know, Father divine, we that are alive still have an opportunity always to make wrong right with you, Father divine, and accept you as our Lord and personal Savior. This afternoon, we thank you for all those who have gathered here, Father, even Lord, to mourn, Father, with the family. But great God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that even at this hour, no matter what pain, no matter what sorrow that they are going through, and even though they are weeping, mighty God, let them weep with hope, Father divine, because all hope is in thee. Father, bless the family, bless the well wishes, Father, those who are watching on social media, I pray, great God, and thank you, and I pray for your blessings upon them also. Strengthen each and every one of them, and let them look unto you, great God, as the Lord and personal Savior. Guide and protect, and strengthen, I pray thee, in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Philip. Let's turn our song books. We're going to sing this song, It Is Well If My Soul. Sorry, it's in, our, in the program as well. It is well if my soul. When peace like a river attendeth my way. When sorrow that the evil is rule. Whatever my lot thou hast taught me to see. It is well if my soul. I know, of course, this is a very common funeral song. Uh, but it's a song. It's for the living, not for the dead. It's for us to find comfort in the Lord. Find comfort in Him. No matter what we are faced with. Difficulty, challenges, obstacles to know that it is well with our soul.
faith shall be signed. of this song is that the songwriter he took a business trip leaving his father his sorry, family at home wife and children and on the business trip he got news that he had lost the business by fire I'm sorry he had the family on board he made a mistake there and not only that the boat sunk and he lost his family and of course on the shore, empty-handed, he penned these words, It is well if my soul, when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, he said that God has taught him to say, It is well, it is well if his soul. That's a difficult thing to say, of course, in times of hardship, in times of difficulty. Especially in the, in the situation where many of us are in today, the loss of a loved one, a father, a brother, an uncle, a son, a good friend, of course, I'm sure for many, it's a hard thing. But as, as we learn from the word of God, it's a good time for us that are living to reflect, to look at our life and to recognize one day, if Christ doesn't come, we all will be here one day. And that the life that we live is very, very important. Whether it be living a life that we leave a legacy behind us, right? Or whether it be we leave inheritance for those who are we're going to leave behind us. Or the main thing, of course, is to ensure that when we stand before our maker, because we all were made by someone, his name is, we call him Yahweh, we call him Elohim, we stand before him justified through his son Jesus. And the Bible says that he's the way, the truth, the light. And so today, of course, as we are here, the living, we have that opportunity to reflect on our lives, to consider our, ourselves, our ways, and whether or not we will be, find ourselves righteous and holy on that great day. Let us turn our Bibles to the book of John chapter 11. I'll read from verse 32 to verse 37, which is where our scripture reading is taken from for this, for this service today. John chapter 11, verse 32 to verse 37. It reads, then when, Mary, Mary, sorry, then when Mary was come with Jesus, where Jesus was, and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. Verse 33. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And said, Where have he laid him? Then said, they said unto him, Lord, come and see. 35, Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. And last verse was 37. And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Question. Let us stand again and we're going to sing our second song, Does Jesus Care? It's taken from our hymnal. 
I'm not sure if it's on the... It's not. Song number 39 in our hymnal. I will say the words of course to assist you as we go along. In case you want to be singing a song. Wonderful song that Jesus gave. Just Jesus gave. When my heart is pain. When my heart is pain. Too deeply for too birth and song. The burden spreads. As the burden spreads. And the cares distress. And the cares distress. And the way. And the way. Grows weary and long. Grows weary and long. Oh, yes, friends, he cares.
Oh, yes, he cares. I know he cares. You know, you and I were created to live eternally. And that's why death is such a hard thing to accept. And even today, the wise men of the world are now creating ways to extend life by mixing men with robots, by finding ways to grow organs that we can extend our lives. And all that is good, of course. But God made a way out. When we sinned, the Bible says, from the foundation of the world, the Lamb of God was slain. So before we sinned, before death came, the answer to death was sent. And his name is Christ Jesus. And yes, he cares, in spite of our grief, in spite of our losses. Friends of mine, this was meant to be temporary. Because of sin, this was, this was before us, but it's meant to be temporary. And there is a better life to come. Of course, many don't believe that today, but it doesn't change the fact. Even if you don't believe this, it is a sunny day today, it is still sunny. Isn't that true? And so, the word of God is true, and Christ is living today in many lives, including mine, and he wants to live in your life. That on that day when he comes, you will be resurrected to eternity. And so I'm speaking to the living. Isn't that true? Praise God. You are living. You have the chance to make that right, that calling right. And I think it's very appropriate in this time to say this because it's a very good time to consider, right? It's a very good time to observe as we celebrate the life of our dear friend, brother, etc., Gerard Jomer. It's a good time to consider that he was here with us at one time and now he's gone. And therefore, it's highly possible I'll be here and I'll be gone sometime. Right? It's a good time to consider. I now welcome uh, the person who's going to do for us the eulogy at this time. And right after, we'll have the special tributes. So they can prepare themselves. You can up. I'm a little so you'll have to bear with me. All right. Um, I'm not sure I'll be able to to um endure the entire time of eulogy, but I'll do my best. So Emron, if I if I falter you know. Alright? <laughs> okay, um I'm thankful to all of you who've come to um pay your last respect and homage to my brother. Um and the eulogy will be very short. Actually the praises that we have <clears throat> that I'm going to have for him. I'm going to say how we lived. Okay. It was a very good um, brotherly time we spent together. Well, it was not that long, but I can recall our parents left us in one house and the other children were in the other house. So that was the only um, time. I can remember we really felt brothers, like brothers, and that was the only brother I had at the time, because the others were too young, okay? So I can recall the house that we lived in. One night I went to bed, and then I started, <laughs> I started to have some funny dreams. The first thing I, I, I can remember, <clears throat> there were lots of planes coming to crash on the house. Aeroplanes all about the place. That was the dream. Then when I woke up, the planes were still around. Okay. It's the first time I experienced a heart attack. Right? Now I, know what a, I knew what a heart attack was back then. Because I was so scared. I was so scared that I could not even walk from the room where I was to, to the bedroom window where he lived. Just to ask him whether he was not hearing what I was hearing. <laughs> 
In fact, when I managed the, 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 the courage to go across to ask him whether he wasn't hearing the carnage outside, he was not answering. Um, and then I was so disappointed. Then finally he said, Sakifet, Sakifet. Then I'll tell him, and you heard the place outside? He said, not in shame, or bad and play. <laughs> then finally he said, I don't And that was it. So I said, what kind of brother is that? But he was, he was a very jovial person. He'd make you laugh. Um, I've never seen my brother real vexed. Instead of being vexed, he would cry. Okay, I can recall that at the time when they were, um, the radios were just um, changing from one name to the next. There were the fountain, telephone king and the pie. I don't know how many of you can remember. Maybe a little decade, you can remember these old radios, telephone king and pie. So when that radio changed into Philips and RK, so... So we had some neighbors, I'm not going to tell you who they were, who always used to run home and say, what did you say? <laughs> so once we were home, and one Russian to Flynn. Well, my brother is Flynn as well, and Jimen, better known as Jimen. The people from our don't know him as Jimen. Flynn, Flynn. I swear to like this, Zemiga, Zemiga, a sheep and a goat. <laughs> so... <laughs> So I better look at him. Keep beating that music. Zemiga, Zemiga, she banana goat. Cause on, you look cute on cattle pot. You know, <laughs> you know that was that's not, that's, that's nothing. You know, and then brother just went back at his home. I can recall all those those nice times we had together. He went to Saint Croix in the early seventies, right? And then they used to call him Tall Boy. So, you know, at the time it was boogie woogie, and then. <laughs> no, he was raised almost a Christian life, so he couldn't dance. None of us could dance, at the, at, especially back then. So he went to dance with his people, having a good time. And that girl there looking at him, boogieing down and said, Talbot himself can't even dance. You know, and he said for the rest of the night, he, left, he just left the hall. And went to his home because he was feeling real bad, you know. But he always liked farming. So he went to live with a guy called Chiwit. And this man was a war veteran. I think he served in Vietnam. The guy had a lot of um, livestock. So one day, some Puerto Ricans and some other guys came to steal the man's livestock. Also, my brother had to actually hide himself um, under, the, under the man's bed and watching outside to see what was going on. He definitely would have died because in, back then, in the 70s, St. Croix was really, really, really a criminal place. I don't know how many of you can remember the, um, the seven guys that were shot in execution style, okay, at Fountain Valley. Can you remember that, the day, Kai? You mm -hmm. don't remember that? A St. Lucian got killed in that, and then he was there at the time, so, so he knew how dangerous it was to pop his head out. As soon as the guy, his boss came and told his boss what happened, the boss said, what? So the man took his gun and he went outside. They said, don't, don't go there, they'll kill you. They kill me. I'm not afraid to die. And then so, and he came back to St. Lucia where our being close as brothers kind of started dying down. And then he was known as G-Men in the Babano area. Everybody would say G-Men, G-Men. So he would pass that Babano, Miss you, I would say, G-Men, Kisa. Um, come on, we know tomorrow. You know, <laughs> so, so Mr. Little li liked him a lot because of that list. Tomorrow, I don't have it yet. So he was nice with everybody, uh, and up to now, when you pass where he lived, you can see all the garden that he used to to um, make all the produce. He used to sell to the public community, and and now everybody's saying, "Where's Jimen? Where's Jimen? Nice guy. He was always there to help, always willing to help." So I miss him dearly. Okay, and now I can say I thank you all for coming. I can thank you all for for supporting us. And I'm so strong to I didn't cry, so you see how strong I am? And that's the eulogy, you know. All right? That's the eulogy. <laughs> all right, thank you very much.
there are no adequate words to express how much you meant to me. And I feel the role of an absent father. I miss you so much. You are a good parent who was humble. Even though we weren't connected by blood, you Even though we weren't connected by blood, you still treated me like your own. I treasure the memories we had together, such as pulling me about in your wheelbarrow and arguing with my mother over hitting me. You made everyone you, you, you made everyone you came in contact with happy and laugh. Some of your catchphrases, including "My name is Yum Yum, give me some," a phrase well known by school children. A hey, you. Hello, hello, hi, and the list goes on. We'll always be remembered. You would have your last dollar and ask if I wanted 50 cents. And if you didn't, you would tell me to come down by you where there, were, there would be food and fruits. I'll cherish these memories because I'm so grateful I got you as a stepfather. We will remember you for that and so much more, Dad. To say that I adored my father would be an understatement. And to say that I will miss him would be an even bigger one. So, through our tears, let us see the blessings. Knowing and loving you. A great humble, and a great humble man. And the best father a daughter could have. You will forever have a special place in my heart. Thank you. Afternoon, everybody. A few words from all of us from our place, which is a restaurant at Babano, as we all used to call him, Jibug, Jiman, Africa. Loving, genuine, easygoing, kind-hearted, respectful man. What can we say but someone we loved with all our heart? While some will say Jimin is Jimin, Indeed, it's true. Sometimes, you baby on the road. You know I had something for you? But I passed by George and I give it to him already. I sell it. So tomorrow, and tomorrow that never came. Jimen was loved by many, especially the children of the community who grew up in the area. I could see especially my daughters. He loved to share especially his fruits with us all at the restaurant. Many used to try to take advantage of him, but he was always, if you don't want it to pay the price, kite la, talking about foods. His favorite was a one pot. He will always send his friend Parang to buy the stuff, but always coming back empty handed. If he had no time to cook at home, he will come up to the bar, the restaurant, I should say, to eat his very stew. That was also his favorite. Whenever we are celebrating an individual birthday at the restaurant, Until I shall find him He's somewhere around Searching, keep on searching. 
much Christo and now hand you over to the guy with the sermon or the sermon net in Jesus name. Good afternoon everybody. We want to thank all friends and well wishers for being here today for us to celebrate the life of Gerald. Um, one of the things that we would learn in life is if you want to hear the truth, you ask a child. And as I sat and I listened to his stepdaughter speaking about him, it speaks volumes. Then you know who he was. And I just remember in the last days of his life, I'm speaking to his brother while he's going through the process of leaving us on this earth. He said to me, you know, he's there with Gerald today. And um, he seems going to leave us, but he's so jovial today. Just in the last moments of his life, he's so jovial. And that's good. What is important in life is as you live, before you come to this moment, there's a day when all of us will come to this moment. And in scripture, it says, the living know they will die. So we know that all of us is going to come to this moment. So it is imperative that when we live, we live a good life so that when we get to this point, that we would have so many people who would come to celebrate their life because we know we're not going to see that person again. And I had an experience once. I was driving with my son on, you know, when you travel and on the throughway, where you would come to the tunnels and the bridges. But just before you go into, for those of you who have traveled into, you know, those big countries, you would recognize there is a sign before you go into the tunnel. It says, last exit before toll. So when you pass, if you don't want to pay toll or be responsible, then you have to take that exit. There is no more. That's the last one. And I remember my last experience was I was driving with my son, and we, we were very close to the bridge. We were going through Andrew Cromwell Bridge. But we were so close that we were using a GPS. I, I, I assume that most of you know what a GPS is. A GPS is a global um, positioning systems. You use it so that it directs you where you go. And for somehow, we made a wrong turn and we went right over the bridge. So, because this was not our way, we had to pay toll to go through the bridge. And because that was not our destination, we returned. We still had to pay in return. So, there is a time when all of us is going to reach that exit. But it is important that the life we live, we cherish it. You know, today we seem, or this generation seem not to appreciate life. And that is something you must appreciate. Life must be appreciated. Irrespective to all the things you can achieve in life, you must appreciate your life. So when you get to this moment, you know that you have lived your life to the fullest. In saying so, today, as I speak, 
I would just ask you to don't even go to the washroom because that might be one of the most dwarf sermon or sermon that you have ever listened to at a funeral. The moderator, he read a passage of scripture from the book of John 11. It's a story of Jesus and his friends. Just like all of us, all of you are here because you were friends with Gerald. And Jesus was so much a close friend to Mary and Martha and Lazarus. So one day, um, they sent to tell Jesus Lazarus died. And they asked him, could he, you know, come by? Because Lazarus was sick, then he died. But he didn't go. He was on some other business. But what is interesting is to understand that the kind of friendship and relationship you have with people is important. So they had such a good relationship. And Jesus was so dear to these people, their friendship, it was just, it was more than friends. So when Mary and Martha, in, in, in that scenario, when, they, when she saw Jesus, she ran to him. And she said, Lord, if you were there, our brother would not die. And in telling Jesus the story, he went on to see Lazarus. And when he had the conversation with, with Mary and Martha, he said, well, they laid him somewhere in a tomb. And in reading this story, I remember when I was a child, when I was a kid growing up in church, because of the shortness of the verse, we, we, we used to, you know, rest in our memory verses to say, Jesus wept. But I never understood why he wept. And for the family, it's okay to cry. It is okay. Don't feel any way if it's hard. But he was Jesus. He was the Messiah. That was his friend. And when he met with the family, in this scenario it says he groaned in his spirit. He felt something was missing. His good friend died. And that's how a lot of us feel today about Gerard. We know we're going to miss him. We will miss him. Yes, we will. It is sad that we have this loved one. And like his brother could say all those nice things about him. But you know what? He cannot hear it. But those of us who are alive it reminds us the life that he lived, and that's important. So when, when Jesus went out there and he, he, he looked into the tomb, and he saw his good friend Lazarus, he was the savior of the world. He was the one who resurrected. He said, in three days I will die, I will be resurrected. He knew that he would be there in a short while. But what about those who don't know? And when he saw his friend Lazarus, the story says he wept. You get it? Because of the friendship, he wept. That is the best we could do who are here now. Which one of us would be in a position where we could say, Gerald, come forth? No. But it's okay to weep because we know we will miss him. 
So those of you who are here in this life celebration, you know, we could just reflect in our lives and realize that one day we're going to get there. I once heard a story that this says, it says when people die or when families die, then, you know, if there is wealth somewhere, then the struggle and the fight begins. But it's not all about that. Mais pas jamais ouais on trop on continue et puis modo cadre en russe ça ou pas quoi c'est pas ça yes continue yes you all pas qu'à chaper des russes là russes là qu'à aller and sometimes we are so fearful of of of, of death my granny told me that in in her days when they used to bring the people you know, to the, when they took them from the mortuary so that they would prepare the death, they would go to their homes. So this guy, he had the, 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 the coffin in the back of his flat van, and as he's going down to Chozel, he gave, a, he gave a guy a ride. He started reading. So, And Pliba, he had a lot book, and he had a lot ride. So, La plia katobe ek lot la ibe se de ti vano pou pawe la plia padete la lot la ki a di dan se ke la ka pawe la plia i mette la men do pou e si la plia a pase mou glas ou te a te so you know because we have this concept about you know death you know where you know, something happens, something, there is something about people who die. But the, the scripture says, the dead, it knows nothing. So we want to thank you for coming. We want to thank our friends and our well-wishers for coming to celebrate the life of Gerald. And in closing, Jesus once said that un homme vini au thé et qui dit parler by foi moi so that foi moi ca diviser propriété et puis that's in the book of law et Jésus qui garde les messieurs et qui dit quoi so ouvre les moi c'est pas être moi et vous et foi ou et ben Jésus qui dit quoi ha garder moi pas pièce à panthère et ni non plus moi c'est avocat so, who saw that we were we were affair, we were sitting there, etc. It's just that we just live a life that is good, and we can continue to live. We can live there, so that when we pass our lives, we can say that we can say good things about us. I want to leave these few words with you in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you, Deacon Dekai. I will now welcome the four persons hanging in the register, uh, Brother Curtis, Sister Yvette Timothy, and Sister Grace, and uh, as we enjoy the instrumental by the musicians. Other song, please? I hope. Oh, sorry. So we have one song by the sister of Shema. The What's the name? Zaki? Sibyl? Sibyl? by Sibyl? How vast beyond the measure That he should give his only son To make a wretched treasure how great the pain of sparing love, the fire that turns his face away, as wounds with the frozen one, bring many sons to glory. Behold the man upon the cross, mighty upon his shoulders. Ashamed I hear my mocking voice 
Hold out among the scoffers And was the sin that held him there Until it was accomplished His dying breath has brought his life I know that it is finished I will not boast in it no gift, no vow, no wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus Christ, His death and resurrection. How great the pain was very love, the man that turns his face away, as one which wore the truth. Bring many sons to glory. Why should I gain from his release? I cannot give an answer. But this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. Why should I gain from his release? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. His wounds have paid my
Thank you, Zaki, for the display of exceptional talent. Thank you. And I welcome Shonika. I should do first the Thanksgiving. One, two. Good afternoon. We, the Juma family, are grateful to have you here to honor Girard Juma's life. We shall never forget your thoughtful words of sympathy and friendship. We would want to express our gratitude to everyone who came to visit, offered assistance, prayed for him, provided financial support, and provided supplies to him both during and after his illness. We are also appreciative of everyone who contributed to the plan of his funeral. Thank you for your generous contributions. They made a significant impact and your support got us through this trying time. Jimin was a good-hearted person who was adored by many. He constantly tried to give even though he didn't have much. And he always offered a helping hand when it was required. He, he will be missed and we once more extend our gratitude. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Shall we all stand? As we bring down the curtains to the service for today. I would like you to join me in singing a closing song. Uh, Father Alone. 442.
will understand it. Will understand it Faithful till death. Faithful till death. Our loving master. of the road As we close in Jesus name oh father and our God in heaven in spite of the reasons why we are here we still give you thanks and praise you are the giver of life and when life leaves this earth father God it does not uh, escape your attention you know why life is gone father God and so for this cause I pray that you help us to consider our lives before you because our days the prophet David said are as grass are as vapor it is so brief when we consider but we were not made to die God in his wisdom did not create death as part of this life and so it brings pain and we grieve when life is gone and for this cause I pray for your mercies to be upon these loved ones who are here Father God that they will bind together in love and in unity let them be comforted in, with the presence of each other here today and may they continue to leave us family 
I pray that we all will continue ourselves, Father God. And even as the prophet, the prophet David said that we will we continue our lives and we may apply our hearts unto wisdom to live our lives in accordance to your holy will because you have appointed a day when you will judge this world in righteousness. And so may, we may consider, may we consider this and to understand that we all have to account to you for the life that you have given to us. Father, dismiss us with your blessings and let your peace continue to be with all. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Praise God. Okay, so we're going to the Babono Cemetery.